I'm Elton. <laughs> it's Sunday night, and we're in a subject that is very controversial throughout America. I don't know many people that believe what I believe about what I'm teaching on Sunday night, and that is the doctrine of devils or the doctrine of demons. I know some people that believe what I believe, but they lived a long time ago. They lived uh, over the last 2,000 years, particularly they lived 2,000 years ago that believed what I believe. What has happened in this demon theology, we have gone through an evolutionary process from the first century, century all the way to the 21st century. What we believe demons are today, or what America believes demons are, is not the same thing what they believed back here. But you have to research many different books, many different encyclopedias. I've got a, a formidable library in my home. I've got the 12-volume set of McClinic and Strong. I've got to set up here and I've got to set it home because I research everywhere I go. And I've got a set of the Hastings Encyclopedia here and I've got to set it home so we can go look at these. These are two of my favorite sets of books. The Hastings is a 13 volume set with an index uh, volume. If you get a Hastings, don't get it without the index volume because the index volume, you can go into it and you can look up any subject, and it'll tell you what volume it's in and what page it's on and what column it's in. And you can look up just numerous subjects. And McClinic and Strong and Hastings are set up different. One will have information the other doesn't have. Uh, Hastings is tremendous. So is McClinic and Strong. But don't think you've got one. You've got what both of them say. You don't. Hastings is particularly interesting because they will take a given subject and they'll give you what the ancient world believed in Assyria about that. For instance, we're talking about demons or daemonion. That's the word. We get our word demon from daemonion. It comes from the root D-A-I-O. It means to distribute fortunes. Now what I've done... I have taken the article out of, out of Hastings, I printed it out, and what I've done is I have made a little, more or less a booklet out of it, we could put a, a front and a back on it, and this is Hastings Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics, Demons and Spirits. And when you get in here, I've had one fellow say, well, you only have demons uh, mentioned one time as distributing fortunes. Well, I don't know how many times you have to have it mentioned. But that's not true. You haven't studied other resources. In this introductory article on demons and spirits, he'll have down here, it's an apportioner, one who apportions. Well, apportion means to divide and distribute in shares. Well, I think that's distributing fortunes, isn't it? Then when you read in this section, we've got some of these at my house that we send out when people request them. They cost about $6 a piece. If you want one of them, uh, if you can't afford it, we'll give you one. But if, if you can afford it, you can have one for $6. That's what it costs to print them. When you go in here, you'll find, you'll find here an introduction, and then you'll go into... Demons and Spirits, and it'll have A-S-S-Y-R-B-A-B. That means this is what demons and spirits were in Assyria and Babylon. Then you'll flip on, and it'll say, Demons and Spirits, in parentheses, Buddhist. to tell you what they are among the Buddhist. Then you'll go on over here, and have Demons and Spirits, Celtic. What they are among the Celts. Then you'll go on over here, and it will say, It'll say demons and spirits, Chinese. And then you go on over here and it'll say demons and spirits, 
Christian. That means Roman Catholic is what it means. It don't mean what we believe here. Then it'll say demons and spirits, Egyptians. Demons and spirits, Greeks. Demons and spirits, Hebrew. Demons and spirits, it's what they believe they were. They'll go into demons and spirits, Hebrew, Indian, 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 Japanese, Jewish, Muslim, Muslim, Persian, Roman, demons and spirits, Slavic, that's the Slavic countries, uh, uh, Herzegovina now, used to be Bulgaria and Yugoslavia, and of course that's where the vampire legend began, and that is over 4,000, that's at least 4,000 years old. Slavic, demons and spirits, the Teutonics, that is, the Teutonic people were the Scandinavian world, the superior white race of the Scandinavians. And that, the superior race goes back to the belief in demons in the ancient world. Tibetan, and that's the end of it, and that's, this is a booklet here, and when you read these, you'll find an intermingling You'll find this thing twists and blends in every culture. Each one of them will tell you that a demon or whatever they called it in that culture. Remember we said that what the Jews called demons, demon meaning to distribute fortunes. I also have this article out of Hastings on fairies. Fairies, fairies. They had many different kinds of fairies. They had good fairies and bad fairies. A troll, T-R-O-L-L, -L, was a fairy. But a troll lived under a bridge or in a cave and wanted to devour children as they came by. It was the same thing as you get out of the fairy tales like Hansel and Gretel or Cinderella. I've got a book on fairy tales and all the fairy tales originated in sun and tree worship in the ancient world or among the, the demon culture or the fairy culture. Well, the fairies were the Celts. That's, and you get wishes from a fairy, wishes. And what Jews call demons, demons, this is Jews, the, the Arabs, the Arab people, called genies, genies, genie, plural is G-E-N-I-I -I or J-I-N-N-I, -N -N -I, genie, and this comes from the word gene, which is your genes is your makeup, so that would be your ancestors. The first time I heard about ancestor worship, I was just a little kid in some elementary school, and the teacher said Shintoism, of the Japanese is ancestor worship. It's all ancestor worship. They took their, the, their ancestors and they deified them, deified their ancestors as little g-o-d-s. When they did that, they took, they took Nimrod, and he was the founder of Babylon, and Babylon mothered all idolatry. So they took Nimrod and deified him as a god, in all the different cultures, he would be Hercules in one culture. He would be Jupiter, Jupiter, or Adonis in another culture. He would be Tammuz in another culture, and the list goes on and on. It's just different names for the same deification of an ancestor, and he had a queen of heaven, and that's the Mary of Roman Catholicism. You'll find Queen of Heaven throughout these articles. You'll find Israel worshiping the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah the 44th chapter and in Jeremiah the 7th chapter and God condemns Israel for that and says, I'll destroy you. 
the Queen of Heaven was said to be turning the wheel of the year. The wheel of the year was the Big Dipper in the ancient world. You got the North Star here. You got the seasons. You have the seasons. You're missing an N in the Shintoism. Huh? You're missing an N in the Shintoism. Oh, am I? It's H-I-N. Shintoism. Shintoism. All right. And then you've got, and the Queen of Heaven was said to turn the wheel of the year. Let me connect something here with you. I've been trying to show you this, trying to get people to understand this. And you've got the Big Dipper here. Well, they worshipped the Big Dipper in the ancient world because these were the seasons of the year. And what they wanted, they wanted... Oops, wait a minute. They wanted crops in the spring. And they said this wheel of the year. They saw the Big Dipper here in the summer, winter... Uh, excuse me, yeah, winter or fall, fall, winter, uh, midsummer, and spring over here. So, the winter was here, excuse me. Winter, winter, and then you move all the way around to the spring where the crops come out. And what they did, they studied where the Big Dipper was in the sky, and they worshipped the stars in the sky, and what the Big Dipper formed was the Swastika. They call that the wheel of the year. And the queen of heaven was supposed to be rotating that wheel of the year to get them back to the spring so they could have crops. It's the earth. It was actually the earth on its axis and so forth. Now, what I'm getting at here is I want you to understand something, that wherever you find superior beings And you can get this. These superior beings were said to be the demons of the ancient world. They had superpowers. They were like Superman. What they were, they were A-R-Y-N. Aryan. Aryan means a superhuman being. That's what it means. Now, now, this is what the people of Atlantis was called. Atlantis in the myth of Atlantis, and Atlantis was said to be destroyed by a great flood. And they had super beings there. Well, this equates. You have to study this very closely because when you find super beings, you find a flood involved or a destruction of the world. Well, what this is is a convolution of Noah and the flood Noah and the flood, and the super beings <clears throat> that supposedly were fallen angels, which were supposed to be superior beings from the ancient world, they equated with these superior beings of Atlanta. Atlantis is nothing but a convolution of Noah's flood and the supposedly fallen angels being the... Being the uh, Fairies, fairies were said to be super beings that came down from heaven. They had superpowers. They could hurt you. They could give you fortunes. They could do. They're not these little uh, lucky charms, fairies. That's not what they were. They could be that, but they could be a troll. They could be a gnome. They could be something fierce and monstrous or something gigantic and powerful like a genie. Well, Everybody that's looking for a super being, all the cultures had him. This is what Adolf Hitler was looking for. He was looking for a superior race. They were actually the Teutons, the Teutons of the Scandinavian world, in the ancient world. It was the Scandinavians. Scandinavia is Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. That's north of Europe, up where it's very cold. And that's where they worship the sun up there in the form of Woden. And these are all demons, Woden. And 
we got our Wod Woden's Day or Wednesday from that. And Thor was his son, and he was the god of, of thunder, and he carried a swastika on the end of his hammer, and his hammer was said to break in pieces all of the other evil gods of the world. It's amazing, I was back selling real estate one time, and the TV was on in an afternoon, and I was walking through, and I had one of those real cheap uh, hero movies on there, you know, uh, Olympus and Zeus and Olympus, the Mount Olympus and Zeus and all this stuff, and, it, you know, one of those cheap uh, afternoon movies. And it was a movie about Thor going to New York City. It was really funny. And he raised up his hammer. On the end of his hammer was, was a swastika. And that's called Thor's hammer. That's another title for that. Well, whenever Hitler was looking for superior beings, he was looking for these fallen angels or the people of Atlantis, and he had heard that the Tibetans, Tibet, Tibet is Buddhist sun worshipers. That was Buddhist sun worshipers. Well, in Tibet, these Buddhist sun worshipers were called Spastis. Spastis. And their, their symbol was a spastika. So he sent Himmler to Tibet to measure these Tibetan Buddhists. They were supposedly to be tall, lanky, long, had long arms, long fingers, big hands, long legs. They were not like the average Oriental people. They were giant men, as far as Hitler was concerned. Now, he wanted a superior race. It's the same thing as the superior fairies, which were said to fall from heaven and be superior. What amazes me, he wanted blonde-headed, blue-eyed Scandinavian men, and he looked like a little runt with a goofy mustache. You know, Figure that out. He certainly wasn't that himself. Besides that, he was of Jewish background. And he goes out and kills all the Jews. Phony. So whenever we're talking about these super beings of Atlantis, you're talking about the same thing. They're fairies. What the Celts call fairies... You can actually, the Celts' form of, their form of sun worship was called S-A-M-H-A-I-N. That's this point right here on the swastika. And they took that point and named it Halloween. Or All Hallows' Eve in the Roman Catholic Church. This point down here was Yule. Yule means wheel. The entire thing was called the Yule. And the Yule log, they cast into the fire. Had, if you'll notice, Christmas and demons have the, same, they have the same origin. The demons was the gods that started at Babel. This is why we don't believe in demons. It's all a fairy tale. Now, what the Celts call fairies, the Arabs called genies. And what you get from a genie, when you look up the word genie in the dictionary, it will tell you a genie is a demon. You get wishes from a genie, and the Jews said the demons are the gods. We're not talking about believing Jews. We're talking about the unbelieving Jews of the first century on back to previous hundreds of years they believed that demons would distribute fortunes and they had good demons and bad demons, had good genies and bad genies. They had good fairies and bad fairies. And this is what the American Indian called totem, the American Indian. Now, I've done a lot of study on this. I hadn't studied a little bit. I've studied for decades on this. And you can dig and get a lot of this out of McClinic and Strong, out of Hastings, I've got all kinds of books on culture studies of the ancient world. This is the way they looked at it. 
It's not the demons of a Pentecostal church. All that did was creep into the church. Some of the writers will tell you that the Christians in the ancient world, in the time of Christ, and even thereafter, they called the gods of the pagans by the term daemonion or demon. The word daemonion and the word god or theos were interchangeable. Now, I've had people arguing with me <clears throat> that are grace and truth people. Jim Brown's a false teacher. He's preaching that's no demons. Please don't do that until you follow what I'm saying. and Go back and check out. The reason I'm re repeating some of this, I've been on the doctrine of devils for the last three plus years on Sunday night. I said some things several years ago, three years ago, that I haven't said in quite a while. I've said all this before. I guess it's time to review it, isn't it? Since most of you that are here hasn't heard all of it. Some of the people that are angry at me, they've been studying under me for a year and a half or two years, and they haven't even heard the beginning of the series, which was three years ago, which has a lot of this in it. If you go into all these sources, I have I travel as a gospel singer in hundreds of Pentecostal churches across America, and I saw people casting out demons all the time. It's the most ridiculous, idiotic stuff I've ever seen. I never saw a demon. And I begin to wonder, why are they doing this? And I begin to study years ago. I began to research years ago. And I found out the first century did not say what the people are saying today in the churches. Even your historians will tell you it bled into the churches. It moved into the churches. And the church has the imagine, they have imagined it to be something that it's not. It was gods in the ancient world. American Indian call it totem. Now, I've got books on fairies. That word totem means kinfolk. It means kindred when you find it. It's the same word in the Greek as genos. It means kinfolk. It comes from the word genomai. It means to cause to come into being, or the word G-E-N-N-E-S-I-S. Genesis, or our word Genesis, which means nativity, the birth of someone. I can't get to all of this. Even the Greeks, the Greeks called these guardian angels. Now, you're going to be reading in Hastings about fairies. <coughs> and about demons and spirits. And they're going to enter, they'll say, and these demons were guardians. That's what, or they'll say, these fairies were guardians. And they'll just say guardian. A guardian angel is someone who follows you around and makes sure you don't get in trouble or gives you a good fortune or distributes wishes to you. First of all, God says, I have declared the end from the beginning and from ancient times Everything that's not yet done, you don't need a guardian angel. You think the power of God cannot protect His people? That's ridiculous. It's arrogant. He's already got it set. His word will make everything come to pass. You don't need angels. Of course, angel is the word, common word. It's the word A-G-G-E-L-O-S in the Greek. <coughs> It's our word angel. It means messenger. When the Bible says that God will give His angels charge over us, He'll give His messengers of truth charge over you and I so we won't trip up. And that's in the 91st Psalm. And He says it of Christ. We're not going to trip up because the messengers of God are going to keep us walking straight. Now, and this is what the... Romans, they called it genius. It looks like genius comes from gene, does it? Well, it is. It comes from gene. It means gifted. If you're gifted, you're getting, you're getting, being guarded and given the things you need. You're distributing fortunes. You are getting your wishes. And what what the Bible calls prayer, meaning bow to the will of God, 
the charismatics have turned it into wishes. Now, let me read to you something. Let me pull it up here. Just be bear with me a minute. Webster's Dictionary. All right, let me see here. Look up the word. Hold on a second. I'm going to give you something. One second here. Oh, wait, I'm looking for the wrong word. W, let me look up here. E. Y'all bear with me. Don't run away. Didn't mean to do this, but sometimes it just comes to my mind to do one of these. All right. All right. All right. Venus, one of the goddesses of the ancient world, which goes back to the queen of heaven. Venus means to desire. It means to desire. It actually comes from the word wish. How many wishes do you get from a genie? You get three. So, what you're talking about is distributing fortunes and money. This is why I connect the charismatic movement with the doctrine of devils or the doctrine of demons or the doctrine of genies or the doctrine of guardian angels. They were the same thing. In the fairy paper, they will in essence tell you that if you believe in one of them, you have to believe in all of them, and they change, they interchange the terminology as you're going through it. When you look at the word vampire in the Hastings, it will say a demon. When you look up the word genie in Webster Dictionary, it will say a demon. You see, the educators seem to know something about it, but everybody else doesn't. When you go back to the ancient world, let me read some things to you about out of the fairy. What do I do with my fairy paper? Did I sit it down over there? I have my fairy paper here. I would just want to read to you. And the best way I know to document some of this stuff is read it. Well, I had it sitting right here. I'm, I'm talking to you as though I'm in a classroom because the amount of documentation is so overwhelming. I've set it down somewhere. I don't know what I did with it. Y'all excuse me. Well, I'll run across it in a minute. I'll tell you about it. Now, I'll, here it is right here. Let me read to you some things out of the fairy paper. The only way I know to do this is read it. This is why we don't believe in demons because it's interchangeable with all this. Let me just read this. The characteristics of the fairy. We're not talking about those guys in San Francisco. Fairies are generally regarded as of a nature between spirits and men or as spirit beings with a semblance of a body which to quote Kirk, which is a historian, elves, fauns, Fairies, uh, they have their occupations, amusements, fightings. They marry and bear children. And this is one of the points. They believe in the, these people believe in fallen angels being demons. That's not true. The fallen angels, and they'll say fallen angels married uh, the sons of God, married the daughters of men. I said it last week. To be a son of someone meant you had to do the will of the Father. And Jesus said, my brothers and sisters, or he could put it this way, sons of God 
are those who do the will of the Father. Couldn't you say that? My brothers and sisters are those who do the will of the Father. If he's a son of God and we're sons of God and we are, we are sons of God and doth not yet appear what we shall be, but know that when he shall appear we'll be like him for we shall see him as he is. We're sons of God. He said Israel was his son when he told Moses, you tell Pharaoh, let my son go. Israel's my son, even my firstborn. So to be a son of someone, you had to be doing the will of the Father. I already put will up there. Put it up there again. That's, that's two testimonies. <laughs> when you're up here talking like this, you do this often. Now, Jesus said, Blessed art thou, over in the 16th chapter of Matthew, he said, Whom do men say that I am? And Peter said, <clears throat> some say that you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah. He said, but whom say ye that I am? He said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to thee, but my Father which in heaven. He said, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. Bar-Jonah, Bar means son of. Son of Jonah. What did he mean? Peter's father's name was Jonah. Jesus is not speaking in literal, physical terminology. Jonah, over in the book of Jonah, was resurrected from the belly of the fish, resurrection, and he went and preached repentance to the people at Nineveh. Peter preached the resurrection in Acts 2. He preached the resurrection and he tells these Jews from every nation under heaven, repent. So he's preaching the resurrection and repent. He has the message of Jonah of the Old Testament. That's what it's talking about. And Peter went in Acts 10, and he was the first man to preach the gospel to the house of Cornelius, and he was an Italian Gentile. And Peter was hesitant to go preach to him because he was a Gentile. That's when God dropped the sheet out of heaven and said, kill and eat. Here's every man of clean and unclean beast. And Peter said, not so, Lord. I've been never eaten anything common or unclean. God said, don't you call common or unclean what I've cleansed. He was talking about the Gentiles. He said, there's a messenger coming to you. He's going to take you to this house of Cornelius. I want you to tell them the truth. That's the first time one of the apostles preached truth to the Gentiles. And Peter said that in Acts 16. He said it was by my mouth that the Gentiles first heard the message of the gospel. So he preached the resurrection. He was a son of Jonah in that he preached Jonah's message. If your, father, if your father's name was John, John and he was a tailor, He was a tailor. They would call you John's son or Johnson. If your father was a, in the ancient world, if he was a shepherd, you were expected to be a shepherd like he was. And if his name was William, they'd call you William's son. That's where we get Johnson, Williamson. It means the son of John. It means you inherit his office. That's why the Pharisees would go and study. They had these little courthouses where you could go study these, these records of the people that were in town, and they would go and study these records and say, his father's a thief, he's going to be a thief. And Jesus tells the Pharisees, your father is the devil. And they're arguing with him, saying, our father's Abraham. We're of the seed of Abraham. He said, I know that, but your father is determined by what you do. And he said, your father's the devil. He was a liar and a murderer, and so are you. Your father's not Abraham. If your father were Abraham, you would do what he did and listen to me. So the point I'm getting at, fallen angels are not sons of God in that old fairy tale. That is a legend that come out of the legends of the Jews. That's a set of books, a seven-volume set that I have at home in my library by Mr. Ginsburg. He is at, Ginsburg is a Jewish name. These were written a long time ago. And they are, it's a set of books that will tell you all about 
legends of the Jews. And the legend of the Jews, I'll say it again. One of the legends was that, that uh, these fallen angels came from heaven, and men have latched onto that, but they were 3,000 3, L's high. Now, you want to know how you can find out what an L is? You pick up your Webster's Dictionary, open up to the E, and look up E-L-L, and it'll tell you it's the length of an arm. It was approximately 42 inches long. When you figure that out, these fallen angels were 11,200 feet tall, approximately. A few inches more or less. Now, I want to know, Whenever people say these were fallen angels, and they were, first of all, the word giant is the word Nephilim, or Nephil, or I-Y-M, that means a bully or a tyrant. You've got three words that it's mentioned in the Old Testament for giant. Not one of them means tall or high, not one of them. They always define out as a bully or a tyrant. Now, some of the giants were tall men, but you don't have to be tall to be a giant. Those Anakims referred to as giants, and, but that doesn't mean tall. It means a bully or a tyrant. They were referred to, those, the, the men of Anak, when Israel went in there to spy out the land, they said they're great, big, tall men. Well, it doesn't say that, that they were tall. When, the, when you use the word giant, it doesn't say that. Therefore, the word giant, you can be five foot six and be a giant. You can be six foot nine and be a giant. You can be seven foot eight and be a giant. You can be four foot three and be a giant. It just depends on how much of a bully you are. Sons of God are people who do the will of the Father, Daughters of men, <clears throat> those are the descendants of Cain or Gentiles. What it was, it was marrying truth to a lie. And we find this is what God is displeased with from one end of the Bible to the other. I'll get into that in a minute. Let me read some more of this. This is about fairies. And you'll notice how it intertwines with the belief of demons and genies. All right. They have their occupation, amusements, fightings. They marry and bear children, but they have powers beyond that of ordinary mortals. These are superior beings, what Hitler was looking for. He's looking for a bunch of fairies. All he had to do was go to San Francisco. <laughs> All right. Yet like those attributed to medicine men, sorcerers, and witches, they're regarded as a separate race of superior beings as many of their title suggests, fair or still folk, people of peace. While in the Edda, which is some of the uh, Hindu books, there are distinct class of beings. They have a king or queen, usually the latter. They have a queen. How about a queen of heaven? The queen of heaven that Israel worshipped was called Malita. Malita. Malita means media tricks. A media tricks is a female mediator. Oh, Aphrodite means wrath subduer. They said that Malita in the ancient world or Aphrodite could subdue the wrath and mediate between the gods and between man and assuage the wrath of the son of the sun god or Thor or Hercules or whichever one you want to pick out. And those were superior beings, weren't they? Wasn't Hercules supposed to be in these, we see him as a man that's come to earth, or Perseus comes to earth, he's a god and he's a man. He's a god-man. Where did god-men start? How about the garden? God means theos. Daemonion was interchangeable with the word theos to the heathen. When God said, Thou shalt not, Eve, she said, I'll be the judge of that. And the word theos means judge. She became a little G-O-D. That's what she became. 
That's where God men started. And when you begin to read this, you'll see that fairies and demons or genies were God men. It's mythology is a convolution of the truth. Let me read some more of this. They have a king, usually a queen. There are also single fairies, the Irish leprechaun, the brownie, not living in communities, in their dwellings as seen occasionally by mortals, there is a great splendor and luxury. Separate fairy bands are sometimes at enmity. This is also found in old Celtic tales of the folk mythology. In the same region, some groups of fairies may be tall, others pygmies, but the varying size is sometimes due to their power of changing their form. You ever see any movie that speaks of changelings? Changelings? Shape shape, shape. shape shifting. Or shape shifting. Isn't that a werewolf? Isn't that a vampire? When you study werewolves in McKinnon and Strong and in Hastings, that's not something in the last 200 years. You study werewolves, that's called lycanthropy. This is the word you look up. Lycanthropy. That's the study of shifting oneself into that of a wolf. This goes back to the King Arthur tales. That was also a part of the sun worship. King Arthur had a round table with 12 of his superior knights, 12 apostles. Hitler built a castle with a round table with a seating for 12 of his superior generals looking for superior beings. Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table is a picture of all of this. If you saw the movie Excalibur, it's on the TV once in a while, the Lady of the Lake comes up out of the lake and gives Arthur the sword. Well, Lady of the Lake was a term for Roman Catholic Mary. We've got Our Lady of the Lake Catholic Church right here in Hendersonville. That all goes back to Arthurian legend. In fact, if you have the McClinic, if you have the Hastings, you look up Arthurian legend. You look up Merlin. You look up all these things, and it'll take you right into the sun worship. And even Edane McCoy, who is a witch, she will tell you she is an she's an authority on witchcraft. She will tell you that the Arthurian legend is thinly veiled sun and tree deities. Guinevere was a tree deity. If you notice, if you listen closely, if you watch that movie, uh, Excalibur, they'll talk about the sword is the power of the land. And as long as the king has the sword in his hand, as long as Christ has the sword coming from his mouth, and the people worship God, they had the crops they wanted. It's just a pollution of Scripture. It's convolution. It's mixing up the truth. And it's, that's why people want to believe in it. You guys that want to get on me for not believing in demons, you've got to believe in King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table if you believe in them. That's the same thing. I, I sit and analyze these uh, movies that these guys research. I told somebody the other day, I was down at, I, I was looking for some movies, old movies out of the 60s because they have to do with genies. There's one called The Brass Bottle with Burl Ives and, it, and he was the genie in the movie and he kept talking all through the movie about the blue gin and the red gin all through the movie. And out of that movie, 
they took Barbara Eden acted in that movie, but she was the genie, and they brought the dream of I Dream of Genie out of that movie. When you get into all of that, it's superior beings. They have their, they possess magic, and magic means science of the Magi. The Magi were the Chaldeans of the Babylonians, the soothsayers. They were the magicians who had managed sleight of hand. They were the ones that had mastered ventriloquism. And when they mastered that, they pretended to talk to the dead in a bottle which was a goat's stomach. And when they translated the word familiar spirit in, in the Septuagint LXX, which is the number 70 in Roman numerals, when you see that, that stands for Septuagint. There were 70 translators of the Septuagint. When they translated this, familiar spirit, which is the word ob in the Hebrew, it means bottle. This was in 200 B.C., the best authorities they could find in the world that knew Hebrew and Greek. They translated the Hebrew text into the Greek and it's said to be the best translation of anything that's been done in Scripture. Uh, so when they show buying a bottle of liquor, and they also say spirits. I can't hear you. They say when you buy a bottle of liquor. They say spirits. That's right. They call a bottle of liquor spirits. It makes you drunk. Thank you. And the, the guys that translated the Septuagint called the familiar spirit E-N-G-A-S-T-R-O M-U-T-H-O-S. It's a construction of N, gastro, and myth, or muthos, which is the word myth. Gastro is the word stomach. And these guys, 200 B.C., said it was a myth in the stomach. They're saying it wasn't true. And they would said to peep and mutter. And you'll find the peeping and muttering over here in Isaiah, the 10th chapter. Look at that. Look at Isaiah 10. I don't know how to say all this in one organized, constructing way. It is so much information. If you believe in demons, you watch all my series and you'll see there's no such thing. I have researched this for decade after decade. For the last 30 years, I've been researching demons. It takes you to fairies and genies and you've got all kinds of historians and sociologists and the like that have written books on this and every time they write, they go into the gods of the ancient world. Where did I say it was going? Isaiah 10. Isaiah 10. Look here. Isaiah, the 10th chapter. Now, whenever they would... Build a house whenever they would go on a journey. These ancient superstitious people never did anything without consulting a soothsayer or one who could talk to the dead, a Chaldean music, magician. Chaldeans were the magicians of the ancient world. They mastered magic and they used it to convince people that they were gods. You slide of hands to say, I've got this God ability and you need to give me your money. Ooh, I think that sounds like Kenneth Copeland, doesn't it? <laughs> I've mastered some magic for you. You give to me and God has to give to you. He is a charlatan. He is a magician. And he's a phony one at that. Now look here. This is a part of what we're talking about. The Assyrian king in this chapter is said to come in in verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger. God has said the Assyrian is the rod in God's hand. He is the sword, like David said in Psalm 17, in the hand of the Lord. And God's going to use the Assyrian armies to come in and slaughter Israel. And he's going to move upon the Assyrian's heart, Sennacherib and Shalmaneser and Sargon and the rest of them. And he's going to move upon the Babylonian king's heart, Nebuchadnezzar, to come in and destroy southern Israel or southern Judah. And he said, You're right in my hand. I will send him against the hypocritical nation of Israel. And against the people of my wrath will I give him charge to take 
the spoil and take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets, how be it? He meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. He's not thinking about doing it. God says, I'm putting it into his heart and in his mind. For he saith, are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Calno as Carchemish? Is not Hamath as Arpad? These are areas of the world on the geographical map. He says, aren't they all the same? They're under my hand and I'll conquer them. Is not Samaria as Damascus? As my hand hath found the kingdoms of idols, whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, Samaria's northern Israel. He says, I've carried Samaria away and I'll get everybody. So do Jerusalem and her idols. Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his work, up on Mount Zion. What's the work he's going to do? He's going to pick up the Assyrian, put it in his mind to come down, down there and destroy him. On Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to cause him to come in here and destroy Israel, and then I'm going to punish him for doing it. Figure that out. If you can. I can't, but I believe it. God says, I'll birth men to be vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. I'll put within their flesh the desire to sin, and then I'll reserve them as vessels of wrath fitted to destruction until the day they die, and I'll hold them accountable for what I have reserved them for. You can't figure that out, can you? And then he says, Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath Performed his whole work upon Mount Zion in Jerusalem. I will punish the, the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Syria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, the king of Assyria, here's what he says. By my strength of my hand, I have done this to Jerusalem. And by my wisdom, it's me. It reminds us of, Nebuch of Nebuchadnezzar when he said, See great Babylon that I have built. And God struck him down, doesn't he? Same thing. By my wisdom, for I am prudent. I am for me. That's what prudent means. I am for me. I am, and none else beside me. And I have removed the bounds of the people. What does he mean by that? I picked them up and carried them off to Assyria. Their boundary line is not Israel anymore. They don't live there. They live over in Assyria. He carried everybody captive everywhere they went. These were, this wasn't one Assyrian king. Is northern Israel was carried captive in 722 B.C. They were under siege in 732 B.C. by, by Tiglath-Pileser, an Assyrian king. And then Shalmaneser came after him and Sargon and then Sennacherib. And over this 10-year period, it was like four different, some say that Sargon was Shalmaneser, but at the most, four different Caesars were uh, four different uh, kings of Assyria were coming in to carry Israel away. But I want you to notice something here. He says, It was by my hand I have removed the bounds of the people and they have robbed their treasures. I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man, and my hand hath found the nest of riches of the people. As one gathereth eggs, I went in and I carried away all of their treasures in Israel and in Judah that are left have I gathered all the earth and there was none that moved the wing or opened the mouth or peeped. Peep was a term for talking to the dead in those bottles in gastromuthos. Israel, it came suddenly. It's Proverbs 29 and 1. He that hardeneth his neck shall be suddenly cut off without remedy. God sent the Assyrian king and boom, judgments here. And they didn't have time to go to a Chaldean magician and peep for them. That was a term that meant to talk like this and, and pretend to be talking to the dead. I am your grandfather. I am your ancestor. I am a fairy, a demon, a genie. That way, if they could talk to the dead, 
that ancestor as a genie or a demon could tell them what to do and distribute fortunes to them. You say, Jim, that's awful complicated. I'm sorry, but I didn't write history. It is complicated. It's complex. But people, I know a demon. I saw a guy walking on the floor going, Ugh, yeah, uh, yeah, and he had a demon. Well, who told you that? Oh, he said it? Well, does, is he rational walking on the floor going, yeah, uh, yeah? Reminds me of the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> Doesn't it you? He must have a demon in him. Reminds me of Bugs Bunny trying to corral him somewhere and get him in a cage. Besides that, I said it last week. The heart is deceitful above all things over there in Jeremiah 17. The heart is deceitful above all things. If there's such a thing as a demon, it's not as evil as your heart. Is it? Nope. Deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know your heart. So if there's any such thing as demons, they're a sissy upside your heart. I said it last week. Up against your heart, they're just a nice, friendly demon like Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> Casper the Friendly Demon. There's no such thing. And he says, he said, they didn't have time. I came upon Israel so suddenly they didn't have time to go consult in a time of war to consult a Chaldean magician who talked to the dead in a bottle, a familiar spirit. Then he says, because this king of Babylon said this, that I have conquered these great lands, he says concerning the king of the Assyrians, shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? I'm the axe holder, you're the axe. You're going to brag, axe what you did? After some... After some lumberjack cuts down a redwood and they get out there, one on each end, can the saw boast itself and say, I did this? Not without the lumberjack. Can the beaver who's got those great big teeth and he cuts down a giant oak tree, just a little old bitty animal this big, takes those big teeth and hacks through it. Can he say, I am the mighty beaver? No, he's just got some teeth that can cut down an oak. I've grown a lot of tomatoes in my life. And a little bitty cut worm, a little bitty inch worm, that long, can take a tomato plant that thick and topple it. What does it say? I'm a great mighty inch worm. He says, you can't brag. He says, and shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? Can the saw say, I did this of my own? No. You're just an instrument. Evil men are instruments in the hand of God to cut us down. They're swords in God's hand, according to the 17th chapter of Psalms. As if a rod should shake itself against them that lift it. He said, a tool cannot take any credit for what I do holding the tool in my hand. Or if the staff should lift up itself... As if it were not made of wood, you think a staff can raise itself up and walk itself down the street? It's got to have a man to pick it up. There, you got one right there. So, now, that is what ventriloquism was about, peeping and muttering. It's all through the Scripture. Now, let me read some more about these fairies. I'm going to be on this a while reviewing some of the stuff I gave you, and I'm trying to be more thorough than I was three years ago. People that have come in, sometimes they'll hear me say, we don't believe in such anything as demons here at Grace and Truth Ministries. And that's all they hear me say two or three sentences in some other message that's not about demons. Well, you don't believe in demons. Well, the Bible says there is. No, it doesn't. They, they live in a superstitious world. They said they had demons. Jesus didn't say it. Were they lying? Well, they may have been. They were living according to the culture of the time. They had imagined that. It was spread throughout. There's things that go on in our society that people say that's just not true. How about accept Christ? Well, everybody says it, but it's not true. According to the Bible, it's not true. Well, everybody else in the world is accepting Christ. Everybody that's, quote, Christians, Catholics and Baptists and Methodists, and, well, it ain't true. It don't matter.
The truth is the truth, whether anybody believes it or not. That's right. The Bible says Jesus rebuked the man. There in Mark, the first chapter, he didn't rebuke them. He said we, and Jesus said, no, it's you. Let me read some more on this. He goes on to say, In the same region, some groups of fairies are tall, others are pygmies, but the varying, the varying size is sometimes due to their power of changing their form. That's a, it was said that Merlin in the King Arthur tale, could change himself into a wolf. That's a werewolf. When you study werewolves out of Hastings, that goes way beyond the movies. It goes back Lon Chaney Jr. Lon Chaney Jr. wasn't the original werewolf. Goes back, you don't even know who Lon Chaney Jr. is, do you? <laughs> Lon Chaney was the first guy in the 20s, the teens in the 20s making movies, to take on all of these monsters. His son was Lon Chaney Jr. He was the first guy in the werewolf films out of the late 30s and early 40s while the Frankenstein monster was coming out, and that was Boris Karloff. And when I was a kid in Fort Worth, and it was 1950 and 51, and I was 11, 12 years old, and I'd go down to the movie uh, in the evening, and it'd be dark when I'd get out of the movie, and I'd get to the bus stop, and I'd be looking around and think that Lon Chaney was in the dark going to get me. <laughs> And I thought Boris Karloff was going to come out going like this. Now, I don't know what you're scared about, somebody that walks like that, because you can run around and go, hey, can you get me? <laughs> now we got, now we got Jason cutting people's heads off in, the, in our living room, and the blood runs out on our floor of our den, and we're going, oh, okay. We've become hardened and callous. I don't mean you. I mean this other Jason. <laughs> Of course, you find Jason over there in the book of Acts. I believe it's the 18th chapter. <clears throat> it's a biblical name. Let me read some more of this. It's ridiculous when people say they believe in demons. No such thing as demons. If you believe in demons, you have to believe in fairies and genies and all the rest of it. He says, Usually great beauty is ascribed to the female fairies, but certain groups of fairies, dwarfs, Kobolds, etc., are ugly and misshapen. Their clothing is often green or red. Let me ask you something. What's the color of the Christ mass? Green and red. Green and red. That's funny. Through the Teutonic dwarfs are dressed in gray. Teutons were the superior race of the north, the Vikings. Nimrod was said to have killed a great bull and to cut the horns off, stick them on his head and put the hooves around his feet, the tail around his waist, tied around. That's where we get the picture of Satan. And Babylon was founded on pride or self or let us make us a name. You find the horns on the buffalo of the American Indians. They wear the buffalo horns on their head. You find them among the Vikings, the horns coming out. All of that is sun worship that goes back to the ancient world, to the demons of Babylon. That's where it started. If demons, demons are not real, but there certainly are myth and there certainly are what the pagans worshipped. So it all started at Babel, didn't it? Revelation says Babylon is the mother of all idolatry. Huh. They are fond of music, singing, and dancing. Hmm. No picture is more charming than they're drawn by folk belief of the nightly fairy revels on the greenwards. This feature may connect with fairies with actual rites of orgiastic character. We get the word orgy from that. The feast of Saturn in the ancient world was an orgy filled with music and laughter and carrying on foolishly. Then he says, the fairies, listen to this, the fairies disappear from their revels at dawn. Hmm. What was it they said? The vampires had to be back by dawn, by the light. The Jews said in, in the 
Judaica, which is a 17-volume set of Jewish encyclopedias that the demons who are spirits of, of the night must perish at dawn. Same thing, isn't it? And I love John 3, John the third chapter, that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. It's just a convolution of man's heart, which is deceitful above all things. You people that want to believe in demons, you're twisted. Well, I don't say you're twisted. You're uninformed. I have spent a long time, about 30 years researching this, digging into all my encyclopedias, digging into books on demons and spirits and devils, and, and you won't find any historians that will say that will agree with what's going on in Pentecostal churches and some Baptist. I don't believe that. They punish with blindness. Fairies punish with blindness. Demons distribute fortunes, don't they? And where's the first demon distributing fortunes? In the garden. That was the serpent distributing all that's in the world. John said, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. How many wishes is that? Three. three. You get three from a genie. She saw a tree that was good for food, fulfilled the lust of the flesh, pleasant the eye, fulfilled the lust of the eye. It would make her wise. When a person is wise in themselves, they are pri proud. Pride of life. Didn't Satan try to tempt Jesus? Well, yes, he did. He said, I'll give you the fortunes of the world. So the, the demons started here. This is the distributing fortunes. Distribute fortunes. And what does, and the word serpent, nakosh, nakosh is the word serpent. It means to enchant, to whisper, or make to feel good. Enchant, whisper. Remember the word witch? Which is the word, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live over there in Exodus, the 22nd chapter, Kossoff. It means to whisper, speak, speak smooth. And the word serpent means to enchant. One of the writers says enchant means to kill with the eye or to blind. And fairies, they punish with blindness those who possess or have gained the power of seeing them when they are invisible to others. Oh. And again, their look is of itself sufficient to bewitch. That's all fairy tales. They have the power of invisibility. They have the power of assuming different shapes, shape-shifting. Werewolves. Merlin turning himself to a wolf. It all, it's all sun and tree worship. It's all Christ mass. It's all Mardi Gras. It's all, it's all a mixture of the same thing. It's the same thing Israel was involved in, Baal and the Grove. They seek to enforce their own race by stealing human children. In the Roman Catholic Church, in their doctrines, they say that if you do not wash a baby with water and baptize it as soon as it's born, that's why they, and of course, Roman Catholicism comes out of this same system, this demon thing, this, uh, this mythology. If you don't sprinkle a baby and baptize it with holy water, quick as you can. I mean, it's born, you leave the hospital, take straight to a priest. It's not a ceremony where everybody's going to come because you may do it in the middle of the day. You get there real quick and he says, shum, shum, gabi, gabi. That's what... That's what that's what Bill Cosby said they used to say. Shum, shum, gobby, gobby. And he'll say that and sprinkle it with water. And, uh, it's, and it's safe. It's home free. If you don't do that, then it becomes a gnome, which is a fairy. Or it becomes a demon. And it dwells between heaven and earth. 
and abducts the children of the Christians and devours them. It's They seek to reinforce their own race by stealing human children. They fall in love with and marry mortals, fairies. That's that old fairy tale that the sons of God were fallen angels and they intermarried with women. That is, sons of God were the descendants of Seth marrying this... Sons of God marrying the daughters of men is Genesis, the sixth chapter. Genesis, the fifth chapter, is the sons of God. Those are the ones doing the will of the Father, the descendants of Adam through Seth. Genesis, the fourth chapter, is the lineage of Cain, and you can't get him back to God. He's not traceable to God. Only Seth goes back to Adam to God. Seth goes down to Noah, down to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob, this is God's family here. These are sons of God. And many of them got polluted by marrying the daughters of men. It's chapter 4 marrying chapter 5. It's unbelief marrying belief. And you've got that from one end of the Bible to the other. If it was fallen angels who are 11,200 feet tall, which comes out of Ginsburg's Legends of the Jews, it would be the same thing going on today. If we're at the end of time, it'll be great big tall giants intermarrying Christian women. So like I've said, the tallest men that we know of is the NBA, the NFL, National Football League, the WWF, World Wrestling Federation. They got some guys in there seven feet, seven and a half feet tall. And the Watusis in Africa. Great big tall guys. These are the tallest men in the world. So like I've said, my wife is four foot eight and a half. It would be Shaquille O'Neal, who's seven foot two, running away with my wife. Does that sound stupid? That's dumb doctrine. If, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. They were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. Giving marriage means to marry two things together that do not fit. That's what the word means. In fact, the word halal. Halal. H-A-L-L-A-L. We say halal, hallelujah, hallelujah, L-A-L-U-J-A-H, L-A-L-U-H-A-L-L-A-L-U-J-A-H, A-U-J-A-H. Hallelujah means the halal belongs to Jehovah. Jah is short for Jehovah. And halal means to shine, boast, give in marriage. Whoever takes the, the halal in mankind boasts and he marries truth to a lie. Let me read some more of this. Men often steal fairy brides. That's men marrying fallen angels. There is no doubt that the idea of the fairy theft of mortals is connected with the more primitive and widespread idea of the anxiety of the dead to obtain the living by causing their death. It's deified ancestors wanting to marry men and cause their death. That's, that's a ghoul. A ghoul is a dead person risen from the dead that wants to go back and eat the living. That's the same thing as a, of a vampire being resurrected from the dead. How can a vampire being resurrected from the dead when Jesus said, I am the resurrection? If you see a movie and it's a vampire movie, well, that's a fairy tale. It's not true. Don't be afraid of it. The thing you need to be afraid of is men who live out there in the wealthy section of town and they, want to, they have a love of money and they want to distribute fortunes and they'll do anything to get it. They'll step in their mother's face and kill their brother to get it. That's what's evil. 
We don't even know what evil is. To the fairy, midwife motive is attached to the widespread idea of the fairy ointment with which the midwife has to anoint the child. Accidentally, it touches his eye and gives her the power of seeing invisible things. And those things of the world are invisible. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. This thing goes on and on. Euphemism, poltergeist. Poltergeist was fairy. Was, was something you found in fairies. That was coming back from the dead. That was a poltergeist. Wasn't something just in a movie. Where do you think these movie makers get these names? You think they made them up? They go back and... Movie makers in Hollywood know more than the preachers in America. Did you know that? Yes. Thus, the relation between men and fairies is a reciprocal one. There are good fairies and bad fairies, good demons and bad demons, good gods and bad gods. Augustus Caesar, according to some of these writers, they said he was called a good daemonion because Augustus Caesar distributed the fortunes of the empire. And when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, Good master! Who? You call anybody good, but Caesar, you were in trouble. That was treason. If a representative of the, gold of the Roman government had heard him say that, they would have taken him in and bonds and put him in prison and might have beaten him or killed him. You didn't call anybody Lord but Caesar. And he was said to be a good demon. When he said, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may inherit eternal life there in Mark 10? Jesus said, why are you calling me good? Because you don't even believe that. If I'm good, I'm God. Only God's good. And he was God. He was like puzzling this man. You calling me good? If I'm good, I'm God. Would you call me God? Fairies in Christian lands are generally regarded as pagans. In Mr. Karras' book, he says the early Christian called the gods of these people demons. That's what they called them. <coughs> Sacred names, signs, and things keep them at a distance. While a demonic character is attributed to them, a mass was celebrated. Oh, we're talking about Catholicism, aren't we? A mass was celebrated in medieval and later times in the church of Poesy to preserve the land from the anger of evil fees. Fee is a term for a fairy, F-E-E. -E. And the prox of Joan of Arc, she was a Roman Catholic leader, wasn't she? The cure of Domery, to said to have sung the gospel annually near the tree of the fees to drive them off. The fairies mourn over their lost supremacy, their fall. The church was generally opposed to fairies, associating them with paganism, devil, and witchcraft. What do you want? Sometimes they are regarded as descendants of rebellious angels cast out of heaven and doomed. There's the, they're not fallen angels. The fallen angels are in Tartarus, according to 2 Peter, the second chapter, and they're reserved in Tartarus. Reserved is the word tereo. It means they remain unchanged. They're kept in Tartarus. Fallen angels are not demons. Angel is, anytime you find it in the Greek, it's masculine gender. Demons are always neuter gender. Neuter means a thing. It's not masculine, it's not male, it's not female. This is many of the reasons why we don't believe in them. And it may be compared with the Arabic belief that the jinn, they're going to interchange jinn or genie. Jinn is plural for genie. And they're going to interchange jinn and fae right here. You see this? Maybe compared with the Arabic belief that the jinn are a pre-Adamic race who rebelled against God. Pre-Adamic. That goes to this foolish thing that Arnold Murray says there's a race before Adam called the Kenites. The Kenites in the Bible 
were sons of Abraham by Keturah, Abraham's second wife, after Sarah died. That's who the Kenites were. And he says, Arnold Murray says they were a pre-Adamic race. There's a problem with that. Eve means the mother of all living. Remember we said that Friday was called the Eve of the Sabbath to the Jews? Eve means mother of. It means mother of the Sabbath. That's what Friday was called. You get into Eve, it means the mother. Christmas Eve is the mother of Christmas. It was birth Christ's mass, or December the 25th, the birthday of the demons of the ancient world. The mother of the gods of the ancient world. Goodness sakes alive. I wish I could give you all of this. I've read this before, but I haven't read it all. Now listen to this. Listen to this. This also hinted by J. Crea in Scottish scenery, demonology, and by Grimm, G-R-I-M-M. Who is Grimm? Grimm's fairy tales? Grimm's demon tales? Grimm as a partial explanation of the fairy belief. I've got a book, like I said, on fairy tales and how they originated in, in demonology. Then he goes on to say, you can get into, let me read this. But no one cause can be alleged for the origin of fairy superstition in taking into account the precisely similar characteristics ascribed also to spirits, ghosts, demons, witches. He's saying they're all related in meaning. So if you believe in demons, you've got to believe in a witch. When the Bible says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, witches couldn't do anything special. They claim to. Necromancy means to talk to the dead. Do you think they were talking to the dead? No, they were pretending to talk to the dead for money. And God says, you do that and I, you have to die in Israel. Huh. Let me see here. And I can get you a copy of this too. Uh, listen to this. Offerings of food or milk are made to Celtic fairies to appease them. What do you leave for St. Nicholas, a Roman Catholic bishop, on Christmas Eve? Cookies and milk. When this has not been done, vengeance is said to have followed. When they celebrate Christmas in the mid-1800s in America, St. Nicholas was a little short guy. He wasn't fat. He had a long pipe, and they said that's what the bums smoked. And... He had a little black demon with him everywhere we went, and they put this new picture on Christmas with, with Thomas Nass painting this new jolly old St. Nicholas for Coca-Cola. And they started putting a new picture, a new face on it. He goes into dark elves and light elves, and he says, the three fairies, three fairies, what were the three wise men? They came from Babylon. And they were wise men. And they had good wise men in Babylon, and they had bad wise men. And these were men who studied the stars. They believed in Christ. And they came from Babylon. Well, they weren't three wise men, but they take that and they make three fairies. Three fairies who attend the birth of a child and foretell its future and give it gifts. Boy, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? Is it a pollution of the Scripture? Yes. Then he says, they often called Fees Feta. And when you see King Arthur's sister, Morgan Le Fay, means Morgan the fairy, Morgan the demon. I know these guys that are angry because I don't believe in demons. They're they haven't studied this. I've put a lot of years in this. Fairies and the dead. I'll just read a couple of these and I'll get back to my regular stuff. It's, it, this, is, this is just the fairy section of out of Hastings. And he goes on to say, fairies and the dead. While the fairy belief cannot be derived merely from a 
belief in ghosts, since the two exist side by side, ghosts and fairies are the same. A house ghost was a house guest, and that's where you get haunted house. Remember, you remember we read in, in the ancient world they had, they had gods of the highways, gods of the fields, gods of the mountains, gods of the roads. They had borders where the fairies or the demons ruled. When, when, the, Assyrian, when the Syrian king, not Assyria, but Syrian king Ben-Hadad attacked Israel, in that 20th chapter of 1 Kings, they beat them in the mountains. They fought them in the mountains. And the Syrians said, your God is the God of of the mountains. He's not the God of the plains. This, uh, this made God angry. What they were saying, your demon is the demon of the mountains. He protects the mountains. He can't protect you on the plains. God says, you made me, now you're calling me a demon. And he tells Ahab, he, t- he says, king of Assyria, Ahab's a wicked king and I'll kill him the day I want him dead, but you're not going to do it. And he sends a messenger to Ahab. You go out against these Syrians. They've called me a demon of the mountains. They've called me a fairy of the mountains. They've called me a genie of the mountains. They said demons. The pagans said demons guarded the mountains. They guarded the roads. You remember Pan? Pan was a god of the all. He was a god of the highways, a god of the fields. To pan an audience means to sweep the audience. He was one of the demons of the ancient world. And he was the God of all. Well, God says, Israel, you go out against the Syrians in the plain. And the Syrians covered the plain, 125, 30,000 of them. And Israel went up against them, and God tells the prophet, you tell Ahab he's going to attack these Syrians out in the plain. Abraham said, who's going to give that order? And the prophet said, you are. And he goes out there against the Syrians who cover the landscape. And they stand there before him like two little flocks of kids. A kid is a goat. Two little flocks, they're just covering the plain. And they go against the Syrians. They killed about 127,000, the best I can remember, that day. They're just a few. God says, when you go against your enemy, they'll, one way, they'll flee seven ways. Then God kills Ahab after that. You're not going to tell me, my king, when he's going to die. I'm just going to give you a little bit here. It should be observed how much is, is common to the two beliefs. Both fairies, ghosts, can benefit or harm the living. Both steal children, they're changelings, while both fairy changeling and ancestral ghost. A ghost is supposed to be the spirit of the dead, isn't it? What happens to the dead when they die? Well, in Luke 16, the rich man died and in hell. And when you go to hell, Jesus said, nobody's coming out of there and nobody else, nobody that's there is going to come out. They that are there can't come here, he said. So, you're talking about what are ghosts? And those, and Lazarus died and was carried to Abraham's bosom. They say that ghosts are wandering around the earth. Ghosts are spirits, or they're demons, or they're ancestors, aren't they? Isn't it your father, your grandfather? Isn't one of your genes? Genie? Isn't that what a ghost is supposed to be? There's no such thing as ghosts. Ghosts were demons, ancestors coming. To get in your body and scare you. Like I say, demons would be, if they were ghosts, they'd be cast for the friendly ghosts because you can't be evil because your heart is evil above all things. Uh, let me finish reading this and I'll stop this. I'm about out of time. While both fairy changeling and ancestral ghosts are always hungry, both can cause death, usually by a stroke producing a pining sickness or warn of sudden death. To see them often means death to the seer. Both can be avoided or repulsed by the same means. Broom. Broom. 
witch's broom. They were said to sweep away the demons. And they wired a broom. By broom, iron, the Babylonian system, which evolved into Roman Catholicism, was said to be a system of iron. There in Daniel, the second chapter, and the scorpions had breastplates of iron. And the scorpions were carnivorous, and they would eat one another. And Roman Catholicism is carnivorous, and... And in Roman Catholicism, they have the tall white pointed hats and white sheets. They had that in The Godfather, a Roman Catholic movie, and the third Godfather, and they come marching along. And the priests of Bell in the ancient world, were, they worshipped a flaming cross, flaming cross. You can get that out of two Babylons. And they wore tall white pointed hats, white sheets. So the clan comes out of that too. And you got the swastika on all the uniforms of the clan, But you have the swastika, a form of the swastika, on the American Indian who has the totem pole. And the, and the American Indian wears the Maltese cross, which the writers will tell you is just a form of the wheel of the year or the swastika. And they have that on the American Indian, don't they? Now, those of you that want to condemn me for not believing in demons... You've got to believe in totems if you believe in demons. You've got to have your totem pole in your living room. Because on the top of the totem pole would be a wolf and then an otter and then a deer. And, then, and whichever one of those families or ancestors you belong to, that spirit of that ancestor was watching over you. And then you never, if you were in a tribe, that the totem or the kinfolk in your family, totem means kinfolk, was the wolf. You never killed a wolf. It was an otter. You never killed an otter. Well, yeah. The reason people believe in demons, they shift the blame to that, and that way they can absolve themselves from any blame. The devil made me do it. Huh? What? The devil made me do it. Yeah, the devil made me do it. That's, that's Flip Wilson's motto. He was just joking. But people want to say the devil made me do it. Nope. You're going away with your own lust and enticed. Let me just read the rest of this. Iron, taboo, listen to this. Both can be avoided. These fairies can be avoided or repulsed by the same means, broom, iron, taboo, running water, living water. Jesus tells the woman at the well, I'll give you living water and you'll never thirst again. If you look under vampires in the Hastings, they'll say the way you keep a vampire at bay is put his casket in running water, baptismal regeneration. How you keep a vampire away is sprinkle holy or living water on him. And that's Catholicism, and that's sun worship, and that's tree worship. You say, Jim Duck, can't you organize this? No. Organize paganism? No, I don't think there's any... Or there's a type of chaotic organization to it because they all crisscross one another. I've run out of time, but let me say this. Listen to this. Both, let me read this because it's good. Both, uh, both the fairies, the changelings, and the dead can cause death, usually by stroke, producing pining sickness, or one sudden death. To see them often means death. Both can be avoided or repulsed by running water. Both are active on May Day and Halloween, and both have offerings made to them. Both love the night. They have to come back from their revels at dawn. For their revels, but both must vanish at cockcrow. They're calling cockcrow something that the Bible doesn't call cockcrow. They're calling it dawn when the rooster's crowing. And the witch and the vampire both possess enchanted objects of which daring mortals try to rob them. Enchanted objects. What do you call that in Catholicism? Scapula. You call it metals. They wear them around their neck. They're enchanted objects. Both dislike untidiness and uncleanness in fairyland. <laughs> 
I think of San Francisco. In fairyland, in the world of the dead, time passes like a dream. There's one thing in here I just want to read to you. Let me see here. Uh, what is it? Torment men, favorite tricks to give men. Let me see here. There's a section here that when you read it, in essence, they're saying, if you believe in one of them, you have to believe in all of them because they're all the same thing. They come, whoops, wait a minute. I got this on two sides of the page. That's why I can have some of these made up and you can read them yourself. Yeah, this is it here. They put it in such words you have to think about it. Uh, W.Y. Evans Wentz has recently sought to prove that fairies exist because in all essentials they appear to be the same as the intelligent forces now recognized by physical researchers whether these are phantasms of the dead remember that's the word that the apostles used when they said it's a spirit it's a phantasm. A phantasm was a demon in the first century. That shows you how ignorant the apostles were at that point. Of the dead are other orders being, beings acting on men seen by them or producing the alleged phenomena which the folk ascribe to the fairies. But he attached too much importance, this man that's trying to prove fairies, he attached too much importance to the evidence of modern Celtic seers and too little to the phenomena of hallucination. He didn't put any emphasis. This guy that's trying to prove him is not emphasizing hallucination. Similar evidence, if rationally accepted, would eventually prove the existence of many other mythical beings. He's saying, if you can prove the existence of fairies, you're going to have to prove demons and genies and the rest because they're the same. Fairies, wherever found are mythical beings, creations of fancy, utilizing existing beliefs, traditions, experience and customs, in following sections, the connection of fairies with earlier divinities, which were demons, which were genies, <laughs> ghosts, and actual races will be discussed. And they go on further into it. I've given you more on that than I've ever given you. I'm going to come back to the fallen angels next week and tied together with separating, this is one thing. When the sons of God marry the daughters of men, it's truth marrying a lie. And God condemns that throughout the Scripture. When he says they'll be giving in marriage at the end of time, he's not talking about gigantic men intermarrying with the little lowly women of the earth. He's talking about giving in marriage will be marrying truth to a lie. When you go into a Baptist church and they talk about accept Christ centers, prayer, Christmas, Easter, and they put it along with a Jesus that they preach, that's truth married with a lie. And they use all the terminology, prayer, pray, salvation, saved, and they don't even have the method of salvation correct, which is by belief, not by sinner's prayer. That's marrying truth to a lie, and that's happening right now. I'm out of time, ain't I, Mike? Well, let's pray. Father, thank you for truth. God, help us to see the truth. I pray for these people that are insistent on demons being true, that you'll convict their hearts and show them the truth. Lord, I hate to see a brother led away into error. Lord, I pray that you'll mature this church, the people in it that are really, truly hungry for your word. God will praise you for everything. Give you honor and glory for all things. Lead us to your elect in Christ's name. Amen. Most people are not going to study to that degree. Colleges, Greek fraternities and sororities. Have a council that governs the whole. Or
Atlantic. You can dance with Rob from Atlantic. Atlantic. Yeah. Atlantic. Yeah. 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 Yeah.